Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom right hand corner. We have a random ladder player going by a bunch of dashes in B. Upper left hand corner, we got Zealot starting as the blue Zerg. This is really to highlight Zealot. I don't know if it's going to be a win or loss. I actually got this replay from Seawall and someone actually provided me some CSS adjustments. So it's spoilerless. So this could be a win, this could be a loss. A Zealot though is a very high Zerg on the ladder, close to the top. And even though... Um, I don't think he's defined as a pro gamer because he wasn't a pro gamer in the Kespa era, but he had he went very far in PSL and ended up beating Royal and a lot of other pro gamers on his way there. So I would not be shocked to see him in ASL sometime in the near future. Anyway, just to let you guys know what's happening in between here, by the way, this is a transition between StarCon and Fighting Spirit Mania again. I'm going to be trying to cast some of these filler games in between that are highlighting uh, various players, uh, things I'm getting from Seawall just to basically not have it just be endless pvp for i think i've got like two months of commentaries that are pvp so <laughs> every two three four games i'm going to try to drop one of these in just as kind of a, a refresher this is on minstrel by the way go ahead and give a map reveal i think this is minstrel i don't have the new maps uh, memorized so standard natural expansion the third is interestingly enough down here where you can see it has kind of a wide pocket where you can attack over the high ground uh, and also, you could you could see storm drops, lurkers, a lot of action happening there, and that's a pretty easy area to engage in. There's also um, an, blah, 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 uh, another base in the top right hand corner uh, that has just 3,000 gas. By the way, some minerals here, and just basically stuff where you can kind of mine out and end up getting on the getting out in the field. So if you look at it uh, this way, it, it's got kind of this winding thing going on where uh, if you kind of look on the mini map, you, can, you have to wind around to get the scouting pattern. Unless you have an overlord, they can fly over that. But at the same time, you can, you know, scoot drones through and do things along those uh, those lines. Um, and you have kind of this ramp feature that kind of shoves through the middle. So I don't know if this is going to go to late game all that often. I'll try to drop. Oops, didn't want to go to letterbox there. We'll drop. I don't know if this is going to go late game all that often. Um, by the way, it looks like we're seeing a pool dropped down here at the southern, the lower nine o'clock location. It looks like we saw a Nexus before Cannon uh, opener here from B, and he's waiting to drop some stuff. But anyway, point being, once this starts potentially mining out, these two minerals are a little bit lighter. There could be some interesting rush strategies or late game antics going on. Could be an interesting map. Um, I like the innovative map design they've had. B was able to hang around to see the lack of gas for quite a period of time. It looks like we do have that third hatchery dropped at the natural expansion. So it looks like this is going to be a uh, pretty, pretty standard play. Let's go ahead and take the map reveal off. As a side note, if you want to see me feature another player, I, I'm going to do this. I'll probably do flash because uh, everybody loves flash. Um, I think I've got another one with, uh, I'm trying to think who else I've got in the, the docket as far as replays to go. But point being, if you want to see someone in particular, shoot me a replay from Seawall or even just send me straight up a link and uh, I'll try to grab it from there and we'll see what we can do. Kind of interesting little eggs along that edge as well that I should note. You can kind of attack, so you can kind of mine out or attack your way along the, e the eggs. Kind of a, just a general interesting map. A lot of Zerglings being constructed here from Zealot in the early game. A lot of Zerglings going to certainly test the front. We do have that gateway there and only a single cannon. And we don't have an investment in Zergling speed, keep in mind. But what this will do is this is very likely going to... Ooh, trying to hide the rest of the Zerglings, going to try to shoot that gap, but playing a very light economy otherwise. Did B get the... Because he needs to get a second cannon down is what needs to happen, or he's going to have to pull a lot of units. Now starting to fill in a couple of additional Zerglings. Probes have pulled the defend on the front, so it looks like B got vision of it. The cannon doing what it can, and the Zerglings trying to push through that gap. Looks like several Zerglings making their way out, but the probes are there, in fact, to defend, so B got eyes on it. Zerglings trying to make their way into the main. These are not speed upgraded Zerglings, so that was a... Kind of a off investment there early, and I don't know that it's going to pay off. By the way, this B player could totally be a pro gamer behind this. I just don't have any information on them and what their ID might be. Looks like the Cybernetics Core at least going to get spotted by Zealot, so he's going to know uh, his timings overall. He's going to go for a Hydralis then. Is he going to go for 973? So we definitely have the nine drones here. We got the four drones, but not yet uh, added to the patch. And two right there. We'll have to see. Probe has made its way across. And this could be disastrous. When Protoss C. The Hydralis then down on the field. Is the drone going to come down blockade? It looks like no. So that probe is going to be able to confirm that Hydralis then, which just makes it infinitely easier when you're a Protoss player to know uh, that you need to get the cannons down. Then the question is, is you just know, okay, I might end up dying. Zealot also missing some 
little bit of an off game for him, missing a couple uh, drones onto the patches here. Maybe this is the late night drunk or some sort of one-handed game that he's playing in the space of this as well. Probe getting chased down towards the north. Could be why it's a little bit longer instead of, like, I was looking for the one by a cell save, I was looking for games that weren't like three or four minutes long. <laughs> Rizal, it's already out. Second gas getting uh, attacked on there by B. Uh, one Zergling trailing and pulling off. This Overlord is not going to, well, is it going to see, I don't think it's going to see the Zealots marching to the six o'clock location. So it looks like they're going to try to go for an end around and attack this exposed base this direction. Didn't even realize that was an opening. So it's part of it is I'm learning these maps as we go as well, which is also a nice preview, but this is going to be a huge attack because you get the Hydralisks that are initially producing to attack towards the front. They're going to be, well, okay, this one's going to head down and he's going to run face long into the Zelts right there. And this is not a winning fight for those Hydralisks. They don't have the speed upgrade quite yet. Even when they get the speed upgrade, uh, it's going to be challenging to deal with them. Thank you for the raid from Zero, by the way. Everybody checking out, check out BSL Nation Wars as it's going on in the background. If you're not already following Zero, what are you doing on this channel? For real, guys. But Zelts able to get in. It looks like there was a decent production of Hydralisks to deal with this. So B going to go ahead and withdraw. What that did save him is he didn't have to build a lot of emergency cannons in the space of the Hydralisk attack. He got a little bit of economic damage slowdown done, but I think that also caused a, a handful of additional Hydralisks to be produced, which slowed down the drone count slightly. This is still a pretty healthy drone count for this moment. Corsair is out. Looks like it's going to get that free Overlord kill mid-map. This one factor of this map, actually, is because there's so many weaving locations, it's hard to get everything where you need it to be which means this is potentially a dead overlord. It's potentially a, a second dead overlord to the front, depending on what happened. And that's putting Zealot in the red at really a kind of a critical moment where he wanted to be pumping extra troops to maybe assault the front. This is going to be plenty of cannons to deal with what's here. So that should be a free gateway, possibly a free forge, plus some weapons not even engaged here from B. But uh, right now, Zealot just investing a lot and not getting a lot for the payoff and it looks like the corsair is able to get the rest of the scouting information he's looking for and zealot definitely i think was going for a bust here pressing in now is still going to go for it zealot leg speed looks like it is finished so going doing some damage two cannons down but the hydrals backing off initially upon seeing additional cannons dropped and also maybe the zealots kind of almost look like they're tweaking out here on the front a little bit but just going to get the free damage of the pylon the gateway, etc. We do have another pylon that might be. I don't think this. If this pylon gets taken out, I don't think a lot of these northern cannons get power. Or never mind that. We've got this cannon up here, or this pylon up here. I'm missing it. Corsair, in the meantime, scouting things up. We do not have a transition to layer anywhere that I'm seeing. Instead, it's going to be four hatch hydra, which I have yet. So I think this is just going to be an all on hydra press without even uh, evolution upgrades in the space of this. We got three gateways behind this double forge in the background here for B by the way. So also wanting to play it. And we got the Templar Archives just morphing in. Um, I don't think these Corsairs are going to have a lot of success wiping out the Overlords on the front to make DT a winning situation here. But this is going to be kind of the race to the High, Templ uh, the High Templar and sufficient units there. And we'll see if it moves up the five hatch. I haven't seen a four hatch. High, uh, this is definitely, I think, one of the more pressure oriented builds. And we also see we're sticking to 22 drones rather than, and this is a lot of Zealots on the front as well. 22 drones rather than cycling it up. So this is just going to be a, a Hydralis bust attempt. We're seeing a later layer than usual. But be it a really healthy economy. If he goes for the gateway flood, moves up to six gateways here, gets these hard Templar and gets some energy and side storm out, should be okay. But is he going to survive? This is so many Hydralisks. This looks like a full three and a half control groups right here. Overlord is going to get picked off here in the background, which might stymie the production on the front. But this is most certainly going to be a bust. So it's going to be the Zealot wall, two additional cannons dropping. This is going to be well underneath the Hydra Storm timing when Zealot pulls the trigger. Yeah, moving in now. And so one cannon down. The Zealot's just sitting there taking damage, and that's not the winning scenario here. Even Zelt, those Zealots on the red, now the probe's pulling to try to defend, but the cannons, not. there's just not a lot of cannons left to make that uh, where the Hydra's are taking uh, enough hits where it's going to make a difference. So it, Zealot has completely wiped out the cannon line on the front off this four Hydra's timing pressure here. A lot of probes getting wiped out. The High Templar are going to die before they're able to expend Size Storm. And that's a dead natural expansion. That's GG. Zealot wins this one. Kind of an interesting one. Really, uh, I haven't seen the four. I, I've seen the uh, transition to five hatch, but I haven't seen four hatch 
mid-game pressure all ends executed like this before. So it's kind of interesting to see from Zealot. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.